Garmin Venue 3 could be the smartwatch masterpiece we all wanted and on theory is offering extensive sports and health tracking experience combined with a bunch of great smart features, but how about the real life performance? Let's inspect! Hey folks, really great to meet you. I'm the Tech Mishka and as usual here we expect a lot of cool and interesting tech. Well, it's been more than a year and a half since the last time Garmin have presented a new Venue member and that here is called Venue 3 which is having a lot of changes on the inside and on the outside it looks very similar to the Venue 2 S. But it's also true that after the release of the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Epix Pro earlier this summer, uh, Garmin tend to use the same kind of health tracking sensors inside the Venue 3 and it costs significantly less. So this video is about exploring all its health tracking, sports tracking and smart functionalities in order to find out whether that's the right fit for you. Garmin is placing this smartwatch side by side with the Forerunner series in terms of budget and it is apparently more affordable than the Epix Pro and the Phoenix Pro lines, a lot more elegant too. In this niche, it's meant to compete against devices like Amazfit Balance, the Huawei Watch GT4 and similar, and of course is among the good alternatives to Apple Watch, especially if sports tracking is your priority. Unboxing. This is the usual Garmin style, a small box, eco-friendly materials, minimum waste of space, just the watch and a charging cable. It's good that Garmin keep the same kind of connector for so many years. Maybe it's time for a change though, or maybe not. What do you think? Type a comment below the video. This here is the white edition. I just want to highlight the fact that these white straps are extremely well designed. After three years of using a similar band on the Vivo Active 3, it remained as white as snow. So if you want to buy alternatives, I'd strongly suggest spending more on the original accessories. They're good. Here's the famous new set of health tracking sensors, which is meant to improve the accuracy of the track parameters. And due to their advanced design, they also may consume somewhat more battery. The design doesn't scream I'm durable, it's more about being slim and elegant. A smaller variation of the watch is available too with very similar features. Speaking of which, a 1.4 inch AMOLED display covered by Gorilla Glass 3, a fiber reinforced polymer made case, the watch counts on the Elevate V5 sensors for health tracking, a close to one week battery life in smart mode, variety of apps and coaches, even 8GB of storage available for music. There's a 22mm quick release silicon strap and weight without it is approximately just 30 grams. Behind all these numbers, the conclusion is that we have a pretty decent setup. Yes, on one side we have a rather plastic case, but it's meant to be slimmer and lighter, and I believe this is the main reason for the choice for this material. And inside we have premium hardware, most of which has been already introduced with the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro earlier this summer. And unfortunately there still is controversy around the ECG tracking feature, because now almost a month after its release, we still do not have the feature enabled. I'm not really sure we would have it at all anytime soon, because if we take Samsung as an example, they had to wait for more than a year in order to get their approvals by the FDA, just trying to set the expectations right about this one. Other than that, a good design, very responsive interface. The display really looks stunning and is easily one of my favorite displays of a smartwatch already. It's peaking at a brightness of around 1000 nits. That's fairly good. And before now we dive into all the health tracking and sport tracking analysis, I think it's a good idea to see how the user interface works. There's a three-button operation, just as it is with the 2 Plus model. Top button opens the activities and the apps section. You could customize each one of these sections and let only your favorite apps appear on top. Same about the workouts. You have to use swipes up and down in order to reach whatever you're looking for, which considering 2023's push for a rotating crown adoption feels a little outdated, but functional enough in most cases. There's a configurable mid button, opens the recently used apps and with the long press, the voice assistant. The behavior of this one is configurable too. The button at the bottom is a back button and with a long press, it acts as something like a quick toggle button giving shortcuts to watch faces and settings. The swipe right action can open a function of your choice. If you swipe up and down from the watch face, you're gonna see the multifunctional card with health summary based on the available widgets. The interface is very straightforward. 
easy to get used to, but if you come from any of the 5 button based Garmin smartwatches or another brand, it's likely gonna take time until you start feeling comfortable with the interface. I did enjoy the advanced level of multimedia involved. You can upload music and store it locally on the watch, which includes even the old-school MP3 files, but you can listen to music services like Spotify, Deezer and Amazon Music. Notifications are actionable, you can send responses, as well as you can see photos which have been included in messages, and this is quite a great deal because most of the sporty competitors from China won't support this feature yet. Workout implementation is also great. Perhaps if you're a heavy Garmin user, you would find some missing advanced telemetry data for certain types of sports. And I guess this is done on purpose so that Garmin have something different to promote about their Forerunner or Epics models. Which doesn't mean that workout analysis is modest. Quite the opposite, it's superior to most other vendors' health tracking systems. And you also count on class-leading accurate GPS signal during sport activities. But also, you can connect to various external sensors for capturing even more data. I was pleased to see the arrival of an e-bike workout type, which even lets you connect to a supported device via ANT Plus or Bluetooth, which comes on top of the traditional availability of using these two protocols for external chest mount HR monitors or other health tracking devices. I feel that Garmin are still in their own league about connectivity to various peripherals and having some cool apps to extract info from such. It's gonna help a lot to people who are careful about pace and cadence. You can easily configure alerts for exceeding certain thresholds. Whether speed or heart rate, it is there. We have a new training benefit feature coming up after each and every workout. Among the good measures for heart rate, blood oxygen saturation and so on, I only would criticize the sleep tracking accuracy, which although having a deeper analysis of everything and giving you so many details, is rather inaccurate. There have been nights where I've spent about an hour reading on my phone and it has detected this time as sleep time. According to Garmin, daytime naps are gonna be detected as well. I didn't have the pleasure to try one though. The accuracy about the remaining features is excellent. As expected, you can compare the sensor's reliability to the Epix Pro and the Phoenix Pro series, because hardware about that is quite similar. GPS signal is very quickly acquired, stays stable all the time. Venue 3 is among the best smartwatches about signal reception I've ever tested. If we dig deeper in the telemetry data, we won't notice any issues with it, so that's yet another perfect implementation by Garmin. A speaker and a microphone are present, so capable smart assistant implementation is there as well, and the ability to take phone calls and listen to music. From the other smart functions, I'd highlight the Garmin Wallet, where you can add your bank cards and make contactless payments, and it really comes close to Google Pay in terms of supported banks. The smartphone app is also excellent, still no way to change the background color though, but the rest is perfectly well grouped and on par with some of the best UX implementations we have about sports watches. Concerning the battery life, with all health tracking features on, always on display, occasional sports with GPS tracking, Garmin promised 5 days, I was about to reach 3.5 to 4 days, and most likely these 5 days would be achievable if it's winter and the screen is dimmer. If you disable always on display, then easily more than a week is achievable, and with a battery saving mode, it's gonna be long. But here comes one of these annoying facts, like the battery indicator, which always shows a full battery up until you reach 20% and simply is letting you know about the estimated backup time remaining. There still are some weird UI hiccups, even when it comes to rearranging items on the various menus, and I feel that such UI imperfections do not belong to a $500 expensive smartwatch. Since we talk about the drawbacks, a rotating implementation might come handy, although I know that it would be a very weird thing for Garmin's ecosystem, but such one will certainly attract techies and Apple Watch users. I also had a few accidental presses of the mid button at night, so that's not cool. There are certain auto-detect workouts missing, such as the option to detect biking or e-biking sessions. Amazfit and Huawei have these implementations working in a fairly good way. And last but not least, the price. A $50 spike is quite serious, plus the fact that Garmin basically reused some hardware they already have. 
Bottom line, if you don't consider the price, this is really one of the best smartwatches that we got in 2023, especially if you're targeting for the best hybrid between health and sport tracking features and smartness because yes it uh, really has excellent design and very functional software and i'm saying all of that from the perspective of someone who is not a professional athlete but i do sports on a regular basis and i use a lot of the smart features of each and every watch that is on my wrist so that's my take on the garmin venue 3 a smartwatch which i believe is very easy to recommend because of its fantastic features and overall performance. So that's my take on this watch and in case you have another opinion or in case you have some other follow-up questions, I'll be happy to help. The comment section is right below the video. As usual, more information about the product, buy it at a discount and maybe support my work here on the channel. You can find it in the video description area. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy life, take some good care of your health and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!